For almost 50 years, February has been recognized as Black History Month. We often see documentaries about Martin Luther King Jr., Maya Angelou, Frederick Douglass, Rosa Parks, and other pioneers of the African American experience. Another accomplished individual is Sarah Breedlove, who is recognized as the first female millionaire in the United States. Sarah Breedlove was born in 1867 to sharecroppers on a Louisiana cotton plantation. When she was widowed at only 20 years old with a two-year-old child to support, she had to find a way to make a living. She developed a revolutionary method for hair treatment that became widely used by African American women. Her products became so popular that she started a company under the brand name Madam C.J. Walker. By 1915, Sarah Breelove had become the first female millionaire in the country with her Madam C.J. Walker beauty products. Though Sarah Breedlove was born into poverty, she was determined to be successful. Being black and a woman did not keep her from moving ahead. Though many young people may not have heard of this entrepreneurial businesswoman, Madam C.J. Walker has earned a place among the historical icons recognized during Black History Month. In 1998, the U.S. Postal Service issued a 32-cent stamp commemorating her accomplishments. Her success at overcoming adversity and becoming the country's first female millionaire is an inspiration to young women everywhere. We have learned that she is also the subject of a new Netflix series which begins in March. It's called Self Made, inspired by the life of Madam C.J. Walker, starring Octavia Spencer. I'm going to check it out. Maybe you should too. For RICC TV, I'm Abigail Salazar. When people hear about needing a PE credit, often they think of the sports Frisco High offers, like basketball and soccer. However, for those not interested in the typical PE class, there's another option, outdoor education. So outdoor education really is just to promote being outdoors. Hopefully by the end of the year, this is a year long course, hopefully by the end of the year, we've developed an appreciation for outdoors and everything that it encompasses. Sure. Students in outdoor ed learn about the importance of outdoor activities and safety. What's been your favorite part of the year so far? It's definitely been the archery unit. We had a lot of fun with that. Uh, learning to shoot it in general. At the beginning, everyone started with like these strings. There was no bow. It was just a string and like it was chaos. I would say learning how to survive in the wilderness as well as having an unorthodox way of getting physical education. I grew up camping, fishing, hunting, um, and so when I got the opportunity to teach it, of course I, you know, took the took the chance. And it's been a fun class. I'm learning stuff too as we go. It's been a fun experience. Technically, doing the campfire and the um, the tents because the experience was really nice. Because then I also like had to make the fire and I got to light it. Outdoor Ed offers a different option to typical choices and enables students to learn and exercise on their own time in the great outdoors. For those looking for a fun and educational PE credit next fall, Outdoor Ed is the class for you. For RACC TV, I'm Sarah Bailey. My name is Nicole Mulkern. I'm the president of National Technical Honor Society and every February we celebrate CTE month. That's a time of year where we celebrate the career and technical education classes that are offered at Frisco High School and all the other FISD schools. And we're here to tell you more about some different classes that are offered for CTE. Um, for digital media, I really enjoy it because it shows, it introduced me to new programs, Adobe programs like Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, and I was always interested in like learning how those worked and what exactly they did and that's what this class does. Later on in life I think I'll be able to use this class like if I'm working an office job and a photo needs to be edited somehow I'll know how to use like Photoshop or something. Like if a program needs to be made that's what um, InDesign does and so I can make that program. In digital media, the thing I enjoy most is probably like the creativity we get to do and like how open our projects are for us. Digital media has taught me how hard it is and how easy it is sometimes to edit photos and make designs for different companies and things. Well, the great thing about digital media is it's an introductory class, so students get to experience all the Adobe suite of products, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere. 
Um, so it's great to find out about, you know, whether you're interested in graphic design or filmmaking uh, or f even photography. The software we use and the skills that we learn in digital media are really good for anybody, especially people that want to do their own business or they're going to be in any kind of advertising or marketing, uh, create things for social media. I mean, you know, we were always trying to create memes, right? Uh, well, you can create your own if you know how to use Photoshop and uh, the other tools that we use in here. I just enjoy advancing my skills when it comes to programming and bonding with the other students, just getting better overall and learning the programming language of Java. Many jobs in the future are going to be related to programming and you can do anything with it. You can create websites, you, you can do anything with programming. My older brother took AP Computer Science at Reedy and my dad knows how to code as well. So I heard them talk about it a couple times, so I decided to try the class. And I enjoyed pre-AP so much that I decided to take AP as well. I like the actual coding part of it, and then it makes me more prepared for college. I'll have one step ahead of everybody else. It teaches us how to like problem solve in different ways, and teaches us how to like work together to find different solutions. So it helps us like not not only like in coding, but like with other subjects as well, just to like work together. Lockers have been a part of the school experience for over a century. Since elementary school, students have traditionally used lockers to store books, lunches, coats, and other items so they can easily move from class to class without having to carry everything with them. Do you use your locker? No. No. How come? Uh, I don't have enough time to go from class to class and have to stop at my locker. Everybody at the school has a backpack anyways, so. Yeah. No. Why not? Because I just carry everything in my backpack, because it's easier? No. Why not? Because I don't think I have a use for it. I do not use my locker. No. Why not? Because I have a backpack. It's lame. No, I do not. Why not? Um, I don't know my locker combination. And I carry my backpack, but I don't really have anything in it, so I don't see the use of my locker. I don't know. Why not? Because I already take my backpack to every class, so I don't really feel like the lockers are necessary. But now that backpacks are allowed in the classroom, most of the 2,500 lockers at FHS remain empty. Some schools across the country are removing the lockers and converting the space to benches where students can sit or visit before and after school or during free time. And what should we do with the lockers here at Fisco High School? We should really like tear them down and probably like put up artwork or something like that. Throw them out. What she said. <laughs> well, if you don't keep them, I think you should start putting stuff on the walls and make the school look nice. Take them down because no one uses them. <laughs> it would be strange to walk into a high school and not see any lockers, but that may be the norm someday. We may be the generation to close the door on high school lockers. <laughs> For RCC TV, I'm Michael Kelly. Good morning, fellow raccoons. Welcome to the Weekend Weather Watch. I'm Broccoli Mills. And I'm Bethany Tomlin. Congratulations, Bethany, on the stars winning the Grand Champions Award at the Crown Pleasers competition two weeks ago. That's a big deal. Thanks, Brock. And the officers were voted best overall. A lot of practice goes into these competitions, and we're still up in the clouds about winning. Speaking of the weather, today will be sunny with a high of 51 and a low of 38. Clouds are expected to return on Saturday with a high of 56 and a low of 50. And with the clouds, there may be rain on Sunday with a high of 65 and a low of 47. So what else is going on, Bethany, besides the possible rain? Varsity Tennis takes on Flower Mound High School all day today at Flower Mound. The wrestling team will be at State today and Saturday at the Berry Center near Houston. Our wrestlers are hard to pin down. You know it. Also, the Lady Raccoon softball team goes to bat against Orin Good Park today in Farmers Branch. After school today, boys and girls soccer take on Lone Star. The girls play at home and the boys play at Memorial Stadium. Tomorrow, the FISC track relays for boys and girls will be held at Memorial Stadium beginning at 8 a.m. You might want to run over and catch that. There are also a couple of scrimmages going on tomorrow as the JV Blue and Gold baseball teams go up to bat against the Colony at the Colony at 10 a.m. 
And varsity baseball goes to bat against Lake Dallas High School in a scrimmage here at Smotherman Field at 11 a.m. This just in, boys basketball plays their first round of playoffs next Tuesday night as they take on Princeton High School at the Prosper High School Gym at 7.30. That's Tuesday night at 7.30. Let's go out and support our basketball team. Road trip. Anything else, Broccoli? The Stars will have their annual spring show in April, and you'll be able to see why they win their competitions. But that's still a few weeks off, so we'll keep you posted. Plus, tomorrow we perform at Lebanon Trail High School at another Cow Pleasers dance competition. And here's a little preview for it. <laughs> for RACC TV, I'm Broccoli Mills. And I'm Bethany Tomlin.